Okay, so good evening. I think tonight Hello. I would do a um oh hey Nula, how you doing? Big fan of the Nigunim. So I think tonight, uh, I thought tonight I would do a change it up, a different type of Nigan, a Nigan with no words. After coming off last week's Nigan of Haneiros Halalu, which is very, very long, long on purpose. Uh, but when you light your Shabbos candles, you'll see that text, uh, especially if you have the Chabad Siddur. This is one of my Chabad Siddurim. Um, after you light the candles, which we'll talk about tomorrow, the laws of lighting candles, um, we'll say the three brachas on the first night and then two for the rest of the night, the, uh, the other nights, the following nights. The last brach, the last thing we'll say is the Haneiros Halalu. Um, and we sing it in Chabad. But like I said, sometimes I get a little bit, uh, all right, let's make it move a little faster here. I don't make it so repetitive. Um, there's actually, just a, like a side note, some would say, I, I once heard from a rabbi, I don't know who it was, or in my yeshiva or whatever it was, we don't sing that song, Haneiros Halalu, on Shabbos. It's muksa. I don't know if we've uh, covered the laws of muksa, things you're not allowed to carry or uh, you can touch, but you can't carry on Shabbos. You can't move. Things you can't move on Shabbos, like a rock. You can't move a rock on Shabbos because you have no purpose for it. Muksa literally means to be set aside. Um, anything that's set aside that you wouldn't normally use on Shabbos, you can't move it on Shabbos. A pencil. You can't use a pencil on Shabbos. Again, depending on what you're holding, but the, the letter of the law as a pencil, because you can't write on Shabbos, therefore there's no new need for a pencil. Uh, a computer, a microphone, <laughs> uh, these things, you don't need them. Even if you're not going to use them, you can't move them. It's called muksa. That song I once heard is muksa, because it's about lighting candles, uh, lighting the, shot, the uh, Hanukkah candles. And we don't, uh, now it's obviously not really muksa, because you can't move it, but it's the, there's like a spirit of muksa to it. But uh, my neighbor, who lives right next door to me? Yeah, like a, that's what usually what a neighbor is called. Um, we have a tradition of eating together every Shabbos for the past, I don't know, 10 years, eight years or, or whatever. And uh, there's always this argument that him and I break out in as to whether you can sing that on Shabbos. And uh, the thing is, when we're at his house, he thinks that's a Baba Misa, it's just a story. But uh, so when we go to his house, we uh, sing the Nigan. Uh, anyway. But anyway, that's a nice thing. Anyway, tonight I want to sing about a, 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 a Hillel Parcher's table nigan. Hillel Parcher. Who was Hillel Parcher? He was a levy. Hillel Par, That was Hillel uh, Lezalov. I'm not sure exactly sure his last name, what his real last name was. But they called him Hillel Parcher because he came from Paris, Paris uh, in Russia. He was a chassid of the Alter Rebbe, originally from Reb Nachum of Chernobyl. One of the uh, the Magid of Mezrich. Yeah, there was the Yisrael Baal Shem Tev, the one who started the Hasidic movement. And then his successor was the Magid of Mezrich, uh, Rav Dov Ber. The Magid of Mezrich, whose yard site is Utes Kislev, coming up in about a week. He had many disciples, the oldest of which was Reb Levi Yitzchak of Berdichev, and uh, the youngest was the Alter Rebbe, Reb Shner Zalman from Liadi, Shner Zalman. And one of the other Hasidim was Reb Nachum of Chernobyl. Chernobyl Hasid was fat. That's what it says. He was fat. Where did he get? Why was he so fat? That, that's what they would use. I'm not trying to be, be politically incorrect. I was, but that's how they would describe it. Um, he would get fat because he would say, Yehesh mei Rabbah. In other words, when he learned Torah, he would literally, when he'd say words of Torah, words of praising, praising of Hashem, his flesh would become wider. It says that when... Um, before praying, he was able to walk through a room, walk through a door. And after prayer, he wasn't able to fit back through the door because he had his flesh literally grew and was excited from Judaism and Yiddishkeit and, and praying to Hashem. I don't say there. I don't know. Okay. It is what it is. That's the story. So, anyway, so Reb Hillel Parcher was a chassid of Reb Nachum of Chernobyl until he met the Alter Rebbe and became a chassid of the Alter Rebbe and of the Mittler Rebbe, the, you know, the, the next Chabad Rebbe. He was known as half a tzaddik. He was half a tzaddik. Sometimes he would, the, yeah, we learned in Tanya class what a tzaddik is. Yeah, and he would, be, he would have a tremendous joy when the spirit of tzad, 
of tzitkis, of righteousness, would come over him. Oh, well, these lofty spiritual levels that I have no idea what they're like. But it would, it would, it would excite him. And he would get so excited, he would start dancing. And there were stories of him dancing with the mailman. A non-Jewish mailman would bring the mail. And he, Reb Hillel <laughs> started feeling this uh, pleasure of being a tzaddik. And he would start dancing with the mailman. I'm not sure if the mailman enjoyed it. I probably did. Reb Hillel Barcher was a, um, was a wonderful, extremely joyful and wonderful person. Um, and uh, he really... He was amazing. One of the one of the um, activities that he was involved in was providing kosher food for the Cantonists. The Cantonists were uh, Jewish boys who were taken away by the Russian army at the age of seven, uh, conscripted into the army, and they would have twenty years of conscrip- conscription. Yeah, they would have to be uh, part of the Jew- uh, the Russian army for twenty years. So you can imagine they would totally forget about Judaism. And where they who where they came from, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, he would find out, you know, where they were, and he would provide them with kosher food and do anything he can to to help them maintain the relationship uh, with their Judaism and, and from where they came. So this is uh, this is one of his nigunim called the table nigun. I guess it's a nigun that you sing by the table, uh, probably the Shabbos table, but we sing it all the time. I once asked my uh, my mashpia, my mentor. If you can have one niggin playing in your head all the time for the rest of your life, what would it be? Uh, a theme song, yeah, a theme song. And this is what he said. So it's called the Pillow Parchers Table Niggin. <clears throat> anyway, this is how it goes. I did a lighter, I did a lighter, I did a I did a I did a I did a Simcha dik and nigunim, joyful nigunim, it just continues on and continues on because joy has no end. It's a simcha, pirates together. Joy breaks through boundaries. Yeah, you really want to, uh, really want to break through a moment, break through something, something, a mental block or mental struggle or a spiritual struggle. You employ your attribute of joy, your, the quality of joy, and it'll break right through it. It carries you. And that niggin carries me. It's a great niggin. Um, I should have looked it up online. I didn't, I don't have a, uh, my, the room is a little dry. So my, my voice gets a little dry, but uh, I'll send it to you. And that's Reb Hill Parcher's table niggin. It's a niggin that we sing all the time. It's one of my favorite niggin, if not my favorite. You can imagine singing. I don't know, you can't imagine, but I promise you, if you go to a shul and there's a hundred people plus singing that niggin, it goes on and on, and you just want to keep going on and on. It's an incredible niggin. Th- yeah. I think they sang it actually uh, on that uh, the last convention they had with Shulhim. Oh, yeah. It's 70. Yeah. Uh, they had a big party after all the presentations. And uh, yeah, it, it is very, very popular, actually. One yeah. of my favorites, too. I think, uh, uh, what is that called? The uh, Verbrengen or Farbrengen? Yes, Farbrengen. 
Very good. Yeah, so they, they, they sing this. I heard this in diff I, and saw in different videos of Rebbe. Uh, they uh, sing this a lot. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like the go-to. It's the go-to. There's, there's other ones. I'm going to do other very go-to nigunim. But that's yeah. a very go-to nigun. Yes. Yeah, they probably sing in 770. And if I bring it, if I bring in, I feel like sometimes this, the Hasidic nigunim class turns into a bit of a fabrengen. Fabrengen literally means to gather. I gather. Right. The Hasidim gather together. And it's uh, what it's what makes it unique. It's what makes Hasidim unique. Uh, where, you know, at the time, now everybody does it. But again, you talk about, you share stories, but you share real stories, you know, stories that really change you. And uh, usually one person that's speaking. Now, the Rebbe's Fabrengen were very different. The Rebbe, the Rebbe would speak for anywhere from five to seven hours, no notes. Mm -hmm. He's talking about uh, something, uh, you know, anything, world events, uh, uh, finishing up the whole Gemara, uh, Chassidus, uh, Kabbalah. I mean, just a whole array. People understood probably half, you know, the average Chassid over there, the average person understood maybe 40% of what the Rebbe was saying. And the rest, and then the, the rest had to be studied. Anyway, Yossi Jacobson, who I'm sure you all know, was one of the scribes. Uh, he would transcribe the Rebbe's talks on Shabbos. Um, that was one of his main things. Manus Friedman, who I'm sure you all know, would translate into English simultaneously. And if you ask him, what do you remember from a Fabrengen? He said, absolutely nothing. He would never remember anything because his whole, he was so busy just, just speak, trying to translate um, into English. I don't know, just a little fact to it. But a Fabrengen, the normal a Fabrengen when Chassidim get together and the big Fabrengen of the year is coming up on Yud Tes Kislev, which is uh, next week. What's today? The 11th? So eight days from now. Today's the 12th. So in seven, next week, there's the, call, there's the big Fabrengen of the year, uh, which is called uh, Yud Tes Kislev, Chag Agiula. It's when the Alter Rebbe uh, was freed from prison. But what, the, what does that really mean? It, it, was a, uh, it really means that Chassidus Hashem, and, and it was decreed that Chassidus should be spread. Chassidism should be spread. Um, and the essence of Torah, that means Mashiach, is, is on his way. That's a big fabrengin. And well, I'm sure we'll sing that nigin. Um, There's a special nigin for Yitesh Kislev, but I'll, maybe I'll save it for next week. Um, it's a very long, it's a long one. <laughs> well, yeah. anyway, Are you going? Are you going to visit? I will not be in Kranach. Oh, no, we have our own Fabrengen. We have to take our oh, own community. We have our own Fabrengen here, yeah. But I, but I will be in New York, I think, for yeah. Shabbos by the oil, by the Rebbe's grave site in um, next month. I will be. I have oh. A, whatever, I have a, oof, yeah, I'll be there for just a brief period of time. Okay. Come come, come down to Hudson Valley, to uh, David Lipkowski's area, <laughs> to <Yeah>. Westchester. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able, I don't know if I'll have time, because I'll probably arriving Friday and leaving right after Shabbos, so I'm just oh, coming in for the, uh, I'm just coming in to spend Shabbos by the Oihel, the Rebbe's right. grave site, um, which on Utah's case of, if you haven't been, you should all go. It's a very holy place. You'll probably find some celebrities there not that you should go for the celebrities but uh whatever a lot of people go there all different type all walks of life because as we know the soul remains with the body yeah the nefesh remains with the body and especially if it's sadik um so uh mm. anyway, what, what's going on so the, that's it well, this is the red pillow part just table niggin table to yeah we'll sing it mm. we'll play it again i'll sing it to you i'll send you guys later um that was it that's all i had <laughs> i just i love that nigga um tomorrow morning we'll continue with more laws of uh of of hanukkah um like more deep into laws less of the story and more into the actual laws to light the candles what you can light the candles with when do you have to light it um what if you forget well, we'll, we'll get into whatever and uh, we'll be well prepared for hanukkah yeah okay that's it. Right. That's what I have, everybody. You. you have any questions? Zai gesund. You should be well, and I'll see you all a little bit later. Be well. All right. See, see you later. Ya.